Pumpkin Town, written by Katie Mecki, illustrated by Pablo Bernasconi. Jose and his family grew pumpkins that growing began with shiny seeds which were followed by long vines and those vines grew every which way. The pumpkins grew every which way too from small to fat and tall. The Jack B. Littles could be dropped into pockets. The Happy Jacks were bigger, a strong enough boy could carry just one. The Big Moons were bigger still, too large for five boys to roll. Come fall, Jose and his family would gather the pumpkins and collect the vines. Then two trucks took the fruits to faraway cities. Some were hollowed and carved and some were saved for pies. But before the trucks took the pumpkins, Jose and his family saved a few. They needed the seeds. When it came to saving pumpkins, Jose's father always said, save only the best and sell the rest. So Jose and his brothers hollowed the best pumpkins and saved only the biggest, brightest seeds. They took the duller, smaller seeds to the edge of the field overlooking the town and tossed them. But one gusty, dusty October day when Jose and his brothers took the lesser seeds to the edge of the field and flung them, the wind caught those seeds and carried them and didn't let them loose until they fell like rain down on the distant town. The seeds slipped into the, the straw roofs and settled into flower pots and sprinkled gardens. And that seemed to be the end of it. But the next morning, spring rain awoke those small seeds and plants began. More rain fell and vines grew every which way. They wrapped around chimneys and wound through corn. At first, the townspeople liked the vines for they were lovely and delicate. But then the vines began to climb up and down and around, growing leafy and thick. They snaked green and silent through one window and then out another. The fruits, then the fruits grew and grew and grew every which way. Soon the townspeople were stepping over pumpkins and around pumpkins and under pumpkins and it was hard to walk even a block. Rooftops sagged under the weight of the big moon's fences fell and when the wind blew, one had to dodge happy jacks and jack wee littles falling from trees. Nothing worse than pumpkins grown the townsfolks. Meanwhile, up on their mountainside, Jose and his family cut and stacked their pumpkins, saving only the best, and when they were done, they stepped back and said, nothing better than pumpkins. But when Jose and his family looked down at the town, it looked odd. It seemed green and orange. Since their field work was done, and because Jose and his brothers were curious, they walked to town the next day where they saw more vines and pumpkins than they'd ever imagined. They remembered the gusty, dusty day when they'd scattered the seeds. It's our fault, whispered Jose. We must do something, whispered his brothers. We rest for now, whispered Jose. But at that, that night, Jose and his brothers cut and stacked the pumpkins and vines. They worked as quietly as they could, but some townspeople still sneak peeks. They marveled at how well the brothers worked. The brothers climbed up poles and t twined through trees and snaked silent through one window and out the other, gathering and stacking pumpkins and vines. When the townspeople awoke, they discovered a mountain of pumpkins and a hill of vines and a mound of tired brothers. While the brothers slept, the townspeople filled the wagon with hay and set five green watermelons between Jose and his brothers. In thanks for their aid, the wagon took the brothers back to their home where they were laid in the glossy grass, still sleeping. When their father found them there, he asked them what they had done to deserve the great watermelons. We just helped the townspeople with their harvest, the brothers said, which was true and nothing more was said. Down. In the town, five trucks came in for the mountain of pumpkins and the townspeople were given a grand sum of money for all that fruit. Ah, nothing better than pumpkins, they said. Much of the money went toward a feast held around a bonfire made by burning the hill of vines. It was decided then that the rest of the pumpkin money would be spent to carve a statue, a statue of the five mysterious brothers who had made a mountain of pumpkins. It took all of the next week for the townspeople to repair their roofs and their fences, and it took all of that week for Jose and his brothers and his father to eat their great gifts. That melons were so sweet that Jose and his family said, nothing is better than watermelons. Be careful with the seeds, Jose's father said. Our field grows pumpkins, not watermelons. So Jose's family filled a great bowl with the seeds, and those seeds 
were forgotten until a day later when the wind roused Jose's father at night. He feared that some of those watermelon seeds might be blown into their field. By moonlight, he carried the bowl to the edge of his field and he tossed the seeds. The wind caught those seeds and carried them and didn't let them loose until they fell like rain down on the town. The watermelon seeds slipped into the straw roofs and settled into the flower pots, sprinkled gardens, and slid into the soil around the statue of Jose and his brothers. And that seemed to be the end of it.